Keith, would you be able to uh, call a roll? Sure. Uh, uh, Edgar? Here. Richard Abusa? Here. Bev? Here. Gordon? Here. Gwen? Here. Ace? Melissa? Hannah? Here. And Spencer? No, so you do have a quorum. Okay, excellent. Hello, y'all. Um, all right, and do we have any uh, folks here from the public that would like to um, make a comment? I'm not sure we should call Laura from the public, but she is here. <laughs> um, yeah, would you like to uh, say anything, Laura? And thank you for coming. Hey, folks. Nope, I'm just here to listen and thank you. All right. Well, that being the case, let's uh, jump right into it. Um, our next item on the agenda is to have a discussion with our city council president, Alex Jarrett. Uh, thank you, Alex, so much for um, uh, coming uh, to our meeting and being willing to have a discussion with us. Um, and um, yeah, um, we have obviously, uh, I've sent out a letter uh, to both you and the mayor, and we'll actually be discussing a little bit later um, about possibilities uh, of uh, meeting with the mayor in person. Uh, but we really do actually appreciate the opportunity uh, to talk to you both um, separately. And so, uh, again, thanks, Alex. Um, but I'm going to welcome you in and uh, and give you the floor at the moment. Great, thanks. Yeah. Um... Uh, Alex Jarrett, uh, city councilor from Ward 5, and the, also the uh, city council president. Um, the housing partnership, all, always there's always a special place in my heart because I, I, well, I started attending in 2018 and then got on the partnership and then I served until I was elected in 2020. Um, <clears throat> so it's, it's great to be back here. Um, <clears throat> so there's a number of things I could talk about, but I guess I maybe wanted a little bit of guidance from you all. Um, there, are, there were a lot of the things in the letter I wasn't complete, you know, I didn't, wasn't party to, um, to make any decisions around. Um, I knew about some of them. Some of them did relate to the council. So I did want to address that. Um, as far as communication, I know that the um, there were, for example, I know the Community Resources Committee back in early 2023 had a um, meeting with developers and others um, to talk about cha challenges in housing. And, and as I understand it, the housing partnership wasn't looped into that and didn't wasn't aware. Um, so I certainly see that as a lapse in communication. And now as council president, I've want to ask, you know, how can I assist the housing partnership in that communication? I would love to connect you to the committee chairs, um, the, so especially those of community resources, which is Councillor Clemmer, and legislative matters, uh, Councillor Elkins, and make sure that you all are in communication. So if there's anything that's they're thinking of putting on the agenda that, that you all are looped in, and, and vice versa, if there's something that you know, you're you're saying, oh, we would love to have a discussion, a joint meeting, for example, or send a representative. Um, <clears throat> then that can happen, and that communication is is flowing. Um, <clears throat> so I, I wanted to address that, and but then also just kind of wanted to ask your guidance on um, what what you want to talk about here. You know, there's there's several areas where the council has jurisdiction, zoning ordinances being the biggest one, um, <clears throat> then uh, home rule petitions, as we've, you know, have a home rule petition on um, <clears throat> tenants uh, not paying the the finder's fee uh, that's that's still stalled out there, but that we, we, we did together. Um, 
and then resolutions as well. Um, <clears throat> and so, so yeah, I'd love your thoughts on what you want to talk about in, in specific today and where, where, I, where we should head. Uh, thank you so much, Alex. And I'm sorry, because I, I, I kind of set you up there. Um, I didn't, I didn't sort of uh, lay a foundation here for us to start a discussion. So I appreciate you, uh, at least uh, uh, checking in. Um, and um, so I, I want to give an opportunity to someone like maybe Richard or Gordon that might be able to just give a quick summary or kind of set set this conversation up um, uh, for some success. Uh, I can jump in and anyone else can sort of fill in. I think one of the roles I've historically filled in since I've been on the partnership quite a long time is to have a big sweet view. And all of the issues that you talked about, Alex, are certainly salient ones that we are concerned about. But I think there's an overarching, I wouldn't call it a background issue, I would call it a foreground issue about the partnership's role. And you know, historically, this partnership has accomplished a lot. It has been involved in great detail in a lot of uh, areas, and, and certainly we're not unaware that roles change as circumstances change. But um, I would say that there is, I'll sort of try and speak personally, and anybody can jump in, that we are concerned to understand our mission globally and that there have been certain telltale signs that have given us pause uh, about how the city wants to utilize us. You know, we're, we do understand the city has a good track record in terms of affordable housing and creating it, but where our role is in all this. And I would say one of the interesting issues that has come up which seemed to us to be um, a no-brainer is we happen to be one of the few communities that has a housing trust fund. And this is one of the tools that many communities are seeking and finding all sorts of ways to utilize and to um, incorporate in their housing vision. And as everybody's fighting for limited resources and nobody's casting aspersions on the Community Preservation Act and the CPA committee and, and the work that they do. But I think it's the strong sense in this board that having a housing trust and well, we have a housing trust. That's the first thing is, we, let's be perfectly clear. We have it, it's on the books. It's just not, it's dormant. Um, you know, we have a fair housing committee in theory on the books, which we're legally required to have, and it's dormant. So there's, you know, those kinds of issues happen. But our intuitive sense and, and developers that we've talked to have always said, you know, it's the money. You know, that's, I mean, other than the land sometimes, which is a stumbling block, but money is certainly a key element. And there are ways that... Um, um, housing trusts can access money and utilize money. And also one of our prime issues is a nimbleness issue in the sense that the CPC has a certain rhythm and guidelines that doesn't necessarily match what a housing trust can do. And so when we find just, well, for lack of a better term, a stonewalling throughout city government about what we think is a no-brainer, uh, and a perfectly appropriate way for us to have a role. And I will say, just as a human dynamics part of you, you've got a volunteer board of people, you know, who really care about housing, but they want, you know, we're all leading busy lives. Nobody wants to waste our time. And if we don't have meaningful roles, then what's the point of doing that? And I think here we're at the cusp of, this board with an incredible legacy of saying the city doesn't care about us in the ways that we think are critical and important. Um, I will go on the record and say, 
apologize to everybody on the board. We had a fairly strong ordinance um, that defined the role of the housing partnership. And in a nutshell, that ordinance said, essentially any ordinance or action in the city that had an impact on affordable housing had to be referred or should be referred to the housing partnership first for comment and so that we could integrate and have a more global view. And I don't know whose watch it was on, I could look historically, but when the city council uh, went to a codified set of ordinances, uh, nobody talked to us and they literally stripped our ordinance language. And so that piece I, I find, you know, as somebody who is dedicated, you know, more than three decades on this, just a personal affront, but it's also the functional reality that we've dealt with that the city, for whatever reasons, muddied up our, our works, which really doesn't have to matter if the people in the city give us the cooperation and the guidance and the role that we want. So um, I think there's this big picture issue that I'm trying to dance around. And um, I think that the council is in a role to say, we want this, we need this, we support you, let's convince the, um, um, the portion of this that resides in the mayor's office to work with us and, and, and write this ship in a, in a better direction. Thanks. Thanks. Um, shall I respond or do others want to speak? Yes, thanks. Thanks, Alex. Uh, did I, any, I miss anything key that Alex needs to know before he gets a global response? Uh, we have a, a comment from uh, Gwen and then, then Beth. Uh, yes. Hi, Alex. Nice to see you. Thank you for coming. Um, I'm really interested in any kind of feedback or any kind of thoughts you have on the 2018 report that came out. Um, I know that you and Edgardo did a lot of work on that and where you feel the city is in terms of, um, you know, barriers to fair housing. Thank you. Um, I actually didn't have my hands up. I was just <laughs> trying to indicate that I thought that Richard did a great job covering the waterfall, the uh, landscape, excuse me. Um, but I will add one thing, and that is I am a new member, relatively speaking, a couple of years. And I can honestly tell you that I don't feel, <clears throat> well, I, I, I think it's a city Thing because I've been on a couple of boards, there doesn't seem to be much attention paid to um, how you orient new members and help them understand more than they can read about how things work. Um, uh, so I would just park that somewhere for someone's future reference. Um, I've spent my whole life as a, a developer of affordable housing in the nonprofit sector and <clears throat> um, have been completely confused um, as to what the city's strategy is. There seems to be a general consensus among those with whom I speak that housing is a problem, pretty big problem, growing bigger perhaps. But what it is and that the city wants to do to focus like a laser, because I think that's what it takes, uh, on removing impediments to both creating new housing and to preserving existing housing and as Gwen said, to making sure that the housing that's there is truly accessible uh, through fair housing and other measures, what the role of the housing authority is on all this, I can tell you after two years, I could not share with someone from another community what it is that Northampton uh, wants to accomplish measurably and through what <clears throat> strategies. So, uh, I'll leave it at that, but I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Thanks all. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So let's see, to address the, I guess, uh, talk about the affordable housing trust fund first. Um, and this, this thought that there's, uh, enough money but well you know i know that when projects come forward 
um, <clears throat> and there's applications made generally a the CPA funds a large portion of those but in my view there aren't enough applications there aren't enough um, projects going forward around affordable housing and if there were more we would not have enough money in the CPA um, <clears throat> and so and I'm curious with the housing bonds bill coming which unfortunately didn't as far as I've heard didn't include the um, <clears throat> the other thing we were working on or you know, I know you all were working on and I was hopeful for um, <clears throat> with the transfer tax um, <clears throat> but how is that money going to come to us how how is that going to you know a trust fund could be a place where that money can be um, put in and then put out as we as as we you know as as needed um, so I'm interested in talking about that more. I, as I understand it, the the difficult the concern was about administrative time and staff time, but I I perhaps there were other things as well. Um, so I, I'd be happy to to continue that conversation um, around that particular issue. Um, the 2019 report, which I you know uh, we all. Uh, helped helped with then uh, Gordon was on and of course Richard. Um, <clears throat> there's uh, how how have things gone since then? Um, we've built some more housing. We've built some more affordable housing. It's nowhere near enough. Um, you know, I I think lately in terms of I don't know if you're familiar with the 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 perspective of supply stability and subsidy that all three of those need to happen so with supply you know i i believe that we need more housing at all income levels for stability we need more tenant protections and um, protections for folks uh, who are at risk of of losing their homes or having to leave homeowners who are also um, and one of the things i'm we're looking at is increased exemptions, tax exemptions for seniors. Um, and there, it would be great to have many more, but there's that that's very restricted by state law, um, which which areas and as are tenant protections. Um, and then subsidy, the and subsidy not just for less than 80% of the area median income. Um, I think we're we've mainly been looking in terms of what projects have happened that that's, you know, that's the capital A affordable housing. Um, but in Northampton, there's, you have to be 150% or maybe even more of area median income to actually buy a single family, detached single family house. Um, and, and even, you know, condos and others are, are very, very, have gone up so much um so i i'm interested in in those i i attended a conference in may about a, with a group that's working to establish a community land trust um a, with with enough support to be sustainable because they've been we've had community land trusts in the past and they haven't gone well um so that's that that's that's been inter been important that's important work i think and that and that trust could could look at um, ways to establish housing that's that's not just capital A uh, affordable. Um, and I'm interested too, I know one of the things you mentioned in the letter is what is the makeup of the partnership and how can we have more communication? Um, like you mentioned that there used to be a city councilor on the partnership, department heads. Um, how can we how can we make the partnership more central as an advisory body? Um, and you know, make sure that 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 anything related is referred. Um, <clears throat> so, th those are some initial thoughts I have from hearing you all. Thanks a lot, Alex. Um, so, um, does anyone have any any? Um, Anything to chime in with, um, add, ask. Uh, go ahead, Hannah. 
Yeah, I was interested, Alex, when you said that uh, community land trusts in the past haven't gone well, was that like a specific one you were referring to? I'm curious, like what the challenges have been there and if there's a common theme. Yeah, we've had a, a community land trust in Northampton and it owned, Richard may know more of the details on this. Um, it certainly it owns at least one property um, and there've been other smaller land trusts. There was one in Holyoke um, and it essentially ran out of steam in terms of volunteer labor. It wasn't big enough to sustain itself, to have a staff person, to have get have the support that it needed to to keep um keep itself like when someone wanted to, to sell sell their their house or their apartment um there there wasn't you know the staff there needs to be the staff there to to support that transition um and and make sure that the the rules are being followed as well um so what this group um uh, it's, I think it, it was called Housing and Land Justice. It's all Hampshire, Hamden, and Franklin County counties. Um, and it's trying to create a, either a larger land trust that could meet that criteria of, of sustainability or to meet to scale um, or an organization that would support smaller land trusts and sort of shared staff. Um, um, so that's, that's something in, in progress. And I'd, I'd love to connect, connect you all to that, that group, if you're interested. Oh, great question, Hannah. Thank you. Um, now just for uh, clarity, the land trust is, is different from the municipal, municipal affordable housing trust, right? Yes. The, so the small one that you're talking about uh, that uh, sort of ran out of steam was the uh, land trust, not the uh, municipal affordable housing. Right. So the community land trust uh, owns the land that the buildings sit on, leases it to the occupants um, <clears throat> and uh, for 99 years. You know, it's a per permanent arrangement generally, but it preserves affordability. But it's it's a you as far as I know they're they're a private nonprofit that 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 then but then can accept money can accept donations of land um, to to subsidize a portion of uh, and and then preserve an affordability similar to a, a deed restriction that you might have at the state level but more flexible. I see. Great. Thank you. Um... Uh, Richard. Yeah, I just had a couple comments. One is about the notion of administrative time. And I certainly understand that it's a very complex thing to run a city and that staff time is a uh, is a precious resource. Uh, we are aware that there are models where the staffing for uh, a housing trust fund actually happens outside of the city structure. And I guess my point in raising that is that feels to me, and I could be wrong, that when we got the door closed in our face about a housing trust fund, that staff time and duplication of efforts was sort of the convenient handle to say, we can't do this, and that we never really had an opportunity to have a meaningful discussion and, um, you know, I, um, I don't think there's an easy way to say what I'm going to say. I, I really like Keith. I think he's very dedicated. You know, I've had a lot of experience with our coordinators for the housing partnership. And, you know, Peg Keller's shoes were a tough act to follow because she was so integrated into the framework of everything that was going on, which certainly was a reason why the housing partnership could benefit from somebody who had such a multifaceted role that there were pieces that she could bring to us and say, here's your part, you can do this, I'll help you do that and whatever. And that may not be in the cards now, um, which may be all the more reason to find a meaningful role 
where we can use as a foundation for this partnership to reestablish uh, its role. I, I, I hope it came through from the letter, and I don't know if you look, listen to our meetings, but essentially we are on the verge of the most or many or perhaps all of the members of the partnership saying this isn't working, you know, we're done here. And uh, I think that's something that's avoidable. Uh, but it's going to take some effort on the city's part. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that, I know I've heard that, you know, you're, you may have a couple in-person meetings with the mayor and, and other planning staff, and I hope that those are fruitful um, to to address some of those issues. Um, and if I can assist with that, um, I'm happy to. I mean, I'm just cognizant of the, the separation um, of powers in terms of what our legislative and executive roles are, but that doesn't mean that the, the legislative role can still advocate, um, even if it's not our direct, direct power, um, like a zoning ordinance would be. Um, so um, I look forward to those conversations and, and plan, plan to follow. That. I would invite you to think creatively. In fact, I think your legislative role might be large, given that we already have this fund established. What really is the issue is um, there are certain monies that potentially are channeled there, and I don't think those are necessarily automatically administrative decisions. I think some of them are, are or could be. Uh, you know, I think the council, in many circumstances, at least in my experience over the years, there's certainly some bright lines, but there are also some lines that aren't quite so bright where the council can take a strong role. Mm -hmm. And I think my question would be, um, wh what money, where, what would be the source of the funds that would then go into the Affordable Housing Trust Fund if it was reactivated? And would that enable funds that would not otherwise be um, available? I might be able to answer some of that. And I mean, it's unfortunate that the um, bond, the housing bond bill didn't include the transfer tax because I think we were eyeing that as a big potential revenue stream. One of our members did a lot of homework and figure out what potentially it could raise, you know, if, if it was taxed at a, you know, sales at a, at a million dollars, for example. Um, and, and, you know, the trust fund to me was really a, a savings account for, for the future. Um, and, and there are communities that put some of their CPA money, some of their housing allotment into their trust fund as a way to preserve that as available down the road. Um, another source might be short-term rentals if there's a tax for people that do, you know, Airbnb kinds of things, if the tax on that, that's a place to also, because those are, those are often what's happening is that people are renting up their apartments as, B, as Airbnbs and that's taking it off the market. So it's dipping into that. So it's a way to put some money back in to maybe counteract countermand the loss of those units of housing is someday being able to use that money to put together to build new housing. Um, so it's a, to me, it's a savings account. Um, mm -hmm. But I think the main thing that really was kind of offensive to us is that we put a lot of effort into educating ourselves. We had brought in people, to, experts to speak to us. And, the, and it just was met with like a, the door was sort of slammed in our face. And the members, that, I mean, I will say that a few meetings ago, people were ready the entire partnership was ready to resign in mass yeah. feeling like there really wasn't a role for us because we felt like our recommendations were not being heard um you know other than to be a rubber stamp for things that the cpa is considering people you know people would come to us with their housing projects and you know they're always great projects and laura is an example of someone who's done some great work it's barely cdc you know, but, you know, when it's, but it's like, is that really the, all we're going to do here? Um, we used to be part of uh, the decision making under um, uh, uh, the um, CDBG monies as well. And that, that was years ago, but that's also been taken away from us. So it's kind of wondering, what are, what are we doing every time we meet other than to sit and just hash out, you know, what we think we'd love to see in the city. And I guess it also comes down to thinking about, you know, one thing I learned through the years is that we are a community that is, suffers from its success because everybody wants to live here um, and it's hard to get in. And, and so that has a ripple effect in terms of the people on the lower end of the income bracket that's hard to get break into the city. So the city has to be far more proactive than just waiting for Valley or Wayfinders or, or the community builders to, to 
to decide they're going to tr build a project. I just looking for that we need to be more uh, focused on in leadership is what we're looking for. And I guess it goes back to one of the earlier comments that we don't really know what the, the and this is for the mayor, um, the mayor's plan um, is for, for in stimulating a housing production in, in the city. A oh, question. I'm sorry, uh, go ahead, Keith. You, yeah, uh, Councilor Jarrett, you mentioned um, uh, zoning ordinances or zoning reform, and I, I don't um, attend all the planning board meetings or city council meetings or, or legislative matters, but is there a particular one that you all are thinking about, or is there one that the partnership could help kind of craft? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, Councilor Elkins and I have been talking for a number of months about um, making it easier to create, well, they're not called accessory dwelling units anymore, but um, additional units on existing properties, whether atta attached or detached. And so we've been looking at loosening the rules around conversion of uh, buildings like carriage houses or garages um, that Right now, you know, there's a lot of those buildings that are too close to the property line. They're not; they're within the the, the setbacks. Um, but these are existing buildings that you know, historic buildings. We we would specifically be looking at, um, a, a, you know, built a, before a certain number of years, um, <clears throat> and making it easier to convert those. In some cases, people, have, you know, they already have it as a studio, um, but you can't. It's not a housing unit, even though it's almost would be there uh, in terms of what the codes would be. So we've been discussing that and we we want to have more conversations about that. And and also the um, we kind of have a system right now where if you want to build a detached, like a small detached building, you have to go through the whole site plan review process and bring it to the planning board. And um, could could that be streamlined? Are there are there structures you know below a certain size, for example, where it could be administrative um, where you don't have to go in front of uh, and have a hearing in front of your neighbors um, <clears throat> where where that in itself, the fact that you have to do that um, could discourage um, <clears throat> and the the building. And the concern would be, you know, making sure that the rules are set in a, in a thoughtful way. So so that what does get built meets the general uh, meets the criteria that that we want and um and so uh yeah but i'm open to i would love to hear from the partnership around what zoning ordinances uh would be helpful um and and think about you know are there are there is there regulation right now that that is stifling that is a poison pill for example uh that that where people just aren't going to do it because of this restriction or this process. I see Bev has. Hey, Bev. Yeah, um, I'm, well, a, a couple of comments. The um, Affordable Housing Trust Fund is certainly one of the things that um, really smarted when the fundamental answer to our question was we don't need any more money because that seems kind of incredulous to most of us. And again, as a developer, money is what it's all about. Um, but um, the um, question of inclusionary zoning, I'm wondering, has it come up as a topic? Has it been you know, sort of vetted and determined to be more of a deterrent to developers than a way to just increase the total number of affordable units. Um, I have heard from folks in planning, the planning department that their assessment, at least in the past, has been that it would, we didn't have enough uh, overhead. I mean, we had too much, what, what's the right word? So the, you know, construction costs uh, yeah. are just as high here, but the market is not, as high um, as say an Eastern mass. So um, that it would be a deterrent rather than uh, anything that would, and then, then the, ho the housing wouldn't get built at all. 
Um, yeah. I wonder if that's still the case because of the how much uh, the the problem is. Yes, housing costs have increased, but so have construction costs. So, but I think doing an assessment um, <clears throat> would be a, a reassessment of that. Um, I know you know Amherst has uh, inclusionary zoning, um, and but they also are seeing more larger apartment buildings get getting built. And we have a couple of those, or at least one on King Street that um, is well, hopefully moving through. I've certainly seen some promotional materials for it. It's going to have, I forget how many, 60 some units, um, but all, all market rate. And the question there is, if we had imposed a one in 10 or whatever, whatever ratio makes sense, um, would that get built? Is is that taking too much, uh, right. or uh, off the the profit there? Um, I don't know, but it's certainly worth looking. Well, at. well, you know, you you point out one thing: economies of scale certainly matter, right? right. And you also mentioned King Street, um, a certain car dealership um, mm -hmm. that has uh, been the subject of discussion. Imagine if. And I don't know the history there. I don't know what the city did or did not do. But I have heard folks talk about a concept of a gateway for the current downtown of Northampton that could imitate some of what's great about it, which is mixed income, mixed use, uh, retail, small scale, on first floor, apartments above, um, and that's a classic example of a site that could accommodate enough scale. And I, I have done this. I know the numbers. What usually happens in a scenario like you're talking about is that the affordable subsidizes the market. I know that's an ironic concept, hmm. but if you think about it, the affordable has got all the low income housing tax credits. It's got mm -hmm. all the CDBG. It maybe has some free land, maybe has some, you know, tax abatements. A maybe has some affordable house trust, affordable housing trust fund money, i.e., money does help, um, and it can be built in phases. But you can have, you know, an idea that after five, six, however many phases, you're going to end up, um, call it a hundred new units, uh, call it 120 new units, and you had alluded to the um, sort of. Uh, problem, if you will, of this notion that there's affordable and then there's market and nothing in between. Well, most successful mixed income communities have very graduated levels of affordability that are subsidized in different ways. Mm -hmm. um, I Again, I've been doing this for a while. I have no clue. That what is the uh, strategy, posture, reality? I know Gordon talks about it frequently of getting some project-based Section 8 out of the housing authority or regional sources or some, you know, more nuanced HUD source. I don't know. But once you get some Section 8 into your very affordable units, that opens up all sorts of possibilities for mm -hmm. the rest of the units to be more affordable. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to lecture on uh, Housing 101, but you can't get developers excited about coming in if they don't know what the community wants. And um, meaning no disrespect, it's a slow road to get there with accessory units, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, that, that's a very small, small One part. of the things we asked to do was have a uh, one or more conversations with developers, nonprofit, for-profit, people who have worked in Northampton, people who might become seduced into working, all credible people who get this stuff that we're talking about, right, that aren't just doing it for a profit. And we were told, no, that's not your role. Um, nope, uh, we already did that. Sorry, we didn't invite you. And so, you know, again, I think on the heels of the Affordable Housing Trust Fund uh, process or lack thereof, uh, people were like, well, we'd like to hear from developers about what the barriers are. And maybe developers would be more comfortable talking to us than they are to the mayor. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, I, I think it absolutely is your role. And I remember 
when I was on, we, you know, we, we did, uh, yeah, having, uh, meetings or it developer related, um, <clears throat> I forget trainings or I, I'm forgetting all the things I'm sure Gordon and Richard and, and Gardo yeah. know um but and and I hope that that wasn't the the intention of the response um I I would hope that we could have uh build on you know the the community resources meeting that you all were unfortunately left out of but build on that um and and have those conversations um so so i i'm yeah i hope that that can happen and and thank you i i i don't i i, I disagree uh that that about what your role is in terms of having having those conversations um but to to talk about others i mean so zoning issues like the gateway district the central business um we were you know, we did uh, a whole bunch of zoning changes uh, with form-based code, and um, I think our our error maybe in in the Gateway District in particular was in allowing too many things, which was corrected for the future in terms of auto dealerships. This this would be the last one in the Gateway District um, because it's already in progress. Uh, but maybe maybe not defining well enough the things we really really wanted, but allowing a, a broad spectrum. Um, so all of those things you mentioned are certainly allowed in in those dis in the district, as far as I'm aware. Um, but and and it's getting beyond my knowledge to about how uh, how to make all those connections happen. Um, and how, how to, I, I've, I've been to some work, some workshops, like at the mass municipal association meetings and seen the complexity of putting together projects that have mul multiple, sometimes, you know, they were talking about, they have 18 different funding sources to make these projects happen. So it, it's, it's really complicated. Um, and anything I can do to, to assist with that, I would love to. Alex, if I could say, I was really sad that Northampton did not consider Hampshire Heights when they talked about where that cutoff is on King Street. Why can't they go beyond? Because people live there and it's already challenged enough there um, in terms of noise pollution, um, you know, being located right next to the highway there. Um, you know, families live there um, that are raising their children. And so I, I worry a lot about like, I guess where the cutoff is now, that would mean that where Hampshire Heights is, I mean, it could just be a little tiny island in the middle of skyscrapers. Um, and it feels like, you know, those families kind of get forgotten in that type of zoning plan. And so that was one thought I did have that I, just thought of now and Wait, then the I, other thing can i ask a clarifying question about that yeah so i'm um, what what do you mean in terms of you would have liked to see like i think north of north of stop and shop or stop and shop in north we have a highway business district you would have liked to see a change in that district um i would like to, to sort of in other words like so does that mean that right next to Hampshire Heights could become a car dealer dealership because it's beyond where the dealership is right now that they're putting in? Right. So yes, uh, highway business allows car dealerships and there was no, no, there hasn't been a, a move to change that. Is that that's you, you're saying you would, you would like to restrict some of the uh, the op the activities which are currently permitted in highway business, um, because they yeah, they aren't compatible certain... with being a neighbor to to Hampshire Heights or, or right. other right within a certain uses. number of feet of an environmental justice community. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you for that clarification. Thanks. And your second question. And and the second thing I was thinking about was like. Um, you know what what 
what role can members of the housing partnership play? And I'm, this might seem like a silly question, but you know, a lot of people that rent reach out to me and you know, they have lots of questions and what can we do about this? And I get phone calls every day, all day. And I um, you know, just recently attended the Fair Housing Conference with Wayfinders and um, you know, I, I went to the um, Western Mass Coalition Against Homelessness Conference a couple of weeks ago um, and so, you know, in that case, like there are other legislative matters that I am paying attention to in regards to renters and people who don't own homes, um, and also the housing bond bill. And so my feeling about the affordable housing trust fund was, I really have wanted to have that housing trust fund open, um, because as Massachusetts is moving through with the bond bill, there may be money that, that could come into our community um, that would support, you know, um, building more affordable housing or land for affordable housing or whatever it could be, but we might miss out because we don't have our trust fund open or mm -hmm. operating. Yeah, but, but I'd be, yeah, I'd, I'd like to learn more about that. The, um, the you know, a lot of I, I get as a city councilor, a lot of people contact me about various issues. So certainly being knowledgeable about who to refer them to when it's not my jurisdiction uh, is, is something that I see my role as. And I, I hope that you all of you could could feel that you, you have the knowledge uh, or could get access to the knowledge so that you can guide people um, as 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 you're able to. Just looking through my notes to see if there's anything else I wanted to mention. Um, yeah, I guess the the role of um, advocacy and um, how the city council could help with that in, in terms of if there's a resolution for state level change, um, uh, you know, if there's a bill that needs support that the housing partnership could could ask the council or counselors to to say will you, will you help us with this because i know that our our state legislators um really appreciate when they can refer to you know the city council of northampton has is in full support of this bill that that makes a difference for them uh, i see richard has his hand up yeah i don't want to put you on the spot but on some level i, I do um, can you commit to at least researching how you view the Affordable Housing Trust legislation as it currently exists uh, and see if the council can't provide a leadership role in helping us reactivate it? One of the things that could, you know, one of the arguments that's been thrown up has been, well, we'd have to staff another board. And in fact, uh, there are circumstances, and we're living proof of that, that boards can multitask. So we're technically the Fair Housing Board right now, I believe, and if memory serves me correct, uh, because the town has to have one, even though we're not really up to our duty there. Um, and it may be that a this board or a subset of it could, in fact, be quite readily um, empowered to serve as the housing trust fund trustees and that they could um, have better stature for figuring out how they would either ask the city for administrative help or channel funds to hire internal or external administrative help. So I'm wondering if you could commit as, a, as the council president to see if there isn't a mechanism, you know, we don't want to antagonize the administration, but if it really is your role or part of your role, I'd like to see you seriously consider that and, and, and work towards that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I absolutely want to learn more. I want to learn all about the, how it's, how it's enacted and what role the city council has versus 
the executive branch. Um, I do generally take a very cooperative approach to um, <clears throat> moving moving things forward. Uh, although I believe there certainly is a time to to take a stand where the executive branch does doesn't agree. Um, <clears throat> so, but but I'd be happy to 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 learn as much as I can about it. And, Thank you. And we appreciate that. Yeah. We do appreciate your coming and. I know you're extremely dedicated. It's, it can be a tough task, so thank you. I think there's some historical precedent to having the partnership play a role in the trust. I, I'm vaguely remembering when I first joined, which is now 12, maybe more years ago, that the partner, the trust was still supporting Hathaway Farms, subsidies there, used to be mm -hmm. Hampton Gardens, um, all that conversion, um, and that there was a member back then who was also one of the trustees. So we, we were kept apprised of, of you know, we, 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 we heard about the budget. We heard about what, how much money's left in the trust fund. We, we, we were actually paying a, very much attention to the fiscal. And there were members who were either, it was one of the trustees was the seat that reserved for the partnership or vice versa. Whoever was on the, who was a trustee would be on the partnership. Mm -hmm. I also yeah. want to thank you for coming, Alex, because I, I don't want to, you know, we, you were an, almost an hour into our meeting and, you, and you're you're visiting family, so I don't want to monopolize your time as well. Thank you. We appreciate you taking time. Maybe it sounds like it might have been a vacation to join us this evening. Um, oh, but I, I just want hope that one of us, or maybe we can talk about what next steps are. I know we're, which we're going to talk next about bringing, having a meeting with the mayor, but I just want to want to leave this meeting feeling like we, 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 we know where we're going next. Mm hmm Yes, thank you, Gordon. And by the way, um, uh, Alex, I did share a uh, link with you. I emailed uh, some of the um, research that Hannah, Gwen, and I did uh, sometime last year about the municipal, uh, municipal affordable housing trust uh, fund. And I also put it on the chat here for everyone else. This, uh, we had created this just um, actually to present to I believe maybe the mayor or the planning department. I forget. It's been a while, uh, but it's it's sitting there. Some of the information that uh, that we looked into, um, and it, it actually does include a couple of examples of where uh, funds can come with. I mean, can come from uh, for the uh, for the trust. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I got that. I'll I'll review it, and yeah. The, as I, as I said before, I think my my question is 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 it yeah is it worth it will there will it enable additional funds uh, and will it be able to meet whatever administrative overhead is necessary? Yeah, it is from our understanding that um, yeah it could do that. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, yeah, um, always great to talk with you all. Feel free to also to reach out to me individually if you want to talk about anything. Um, and my action steps um, are to connect connect you all with the committee chairs of, of community resources and legislative matters. Um, and to, in terms of whenever there's anything related to to housing to connect, you know, make sure that you you see that that's coming before the council, um, uh, and continue to follow, um, you know, your your conversations coming up with the mayor and and planning. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank really you a appreciate lot. Appreciate it. You're Thanks, welcome. Alex. Thanks, Alex. Take care. All right. Good night. Recording, Recording in progress. progress. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, uh,
All right, moving on. Uh, this was um, very good conversation discussion. So I do I do appreciate um, Councilor Jerry uh, taking time to come hang out with us. Um, and so, does anyone else have anything else to uh, add before we move to the next um, portion of our agenda? Okay, so um, uh, Keith, uh, if you can just uh, brief us a little bit on, uh, uh, because we were able to, I think, look at some potential dates that we can uh, meet with the mayor in person. I know that last month we had talked about that possibility and actually the email I sent was probably a little confusing because it was talking more about uh, inviting the mayor to a future meeting. Um, sure. So I apologize for that. Um, Keith, uh, so where we're at with that. Yeah, so I think we talked about like a, like a special July meeting, but um, I think we nixed that. Um, and then, um, so our normal scheduled meeting, if we did it the first Monday of the month in August, we normally take off anyways. The mayor was unavailable for that day, August 5th. Um, but it did offer um, what does September look like? So September 2nd, which is our normal um, scheduled meeting is a holiday. So we could meet on a, that Tuesday, the next day, the third, the mayor is available that day, over to the following day, a uh, week on Monday, the ninth, the mayor is available that day. Um, so, you know, I think we can decide on, do we want to take August off or is this such a pressing issue that we want to have a special uh, meeting uh, and then we just have to get a date, um, but, uh, my sense is that people enjoy having that month off um, from the housing partnership, but I think that's really for y'all discussion. Um, and then, you know, so we can have the discussion about the date uh, for having this in-person meeting. Um, and I definitely want to talk about, you know, the big picture kind of strategy of things that um, we should consider. Um, so I'll just lay the the date option down first, and then we can talk about strategy second. Well, historically, when we have, you know, Labor Day comes up every Monday, the first Monday of September. So we've always picked, we've always just pushed back to the second Monday of the month. Okay. But that doesn't mean we can't do a Tuesday meeting or another evening of the week. The one thing I'll just lay out there starting in September, I'm back to teaching on Tuesday evening. So I wouldn't be available for a Tuesday meeting, at least through into December. <laughs> So the ninth uh, September. Uh so um uh so yeah, so September 9th would be a regular meeting. Um uh but that's also a day where the mayor can meet with us. That is correct. Um as uh the mayor can meet with us uh, uh in the evening or during the day or uh um, a regular scheduled meeting, yeah. Five regular days. scheduled meeting. Sounds good to me. Yeah. Yeah. So seeing a lot of head nods, um, you know, I think it's helpful um, to, you know, think about, so we want to do this in person. Um, and I think that's going to be very helpful for, you know, setting the stage too. But, uh, you know, I'm going to be there. Uh, I believe Carolyn's going to be there. Um, you know, to kind of look for like resetting and what is the strategy? You know, we could say, you know, like, hey, you know, we're not going to be dictating, oh, this is subcommittee over here, this is subcommittee over here, but, you know, you all look for directions, like what is the, what are those things? And, you know, I think one thing is, you know, what is the vision for housing production? You know, the last housing production plan we had is 2011. Um, and so um, that might be something like that, you know, and there's a lot of looking at prioritizing, you know, I think someone made the comment of accessory dwelling units might be a very low, um, um, have a very low return, but doing something else, have a kind of a higher return. Um, and, you know, what are the things over the next year or two years that we can be doing? 
uh, housing production uh, plans. Uh, it could take a little while before we get that going. If that's something we we look for, we you know end up doing. Um, but I mean, what what are your thoughts on on that kind of framework for our discussion with the mayor? Or I think it would be really hard to have that discussion without Carolyn Mish present. Just yep. thought. And Beth? Um, <clears throat> I'll defer to all of you about whether adding Carolyn will generate the candor that I think we're looking for, but I think people want to hear that there's a purpose for the partnership, hear what it is, and maybe hear some acknowledgement that uh, some of the events of the recent past have left us a bit confused. And and so I'm kind of thinking that we'd like, I would like to hear the mayor respond to the letter that we wrote. I'm not saying we shouldn't be prepared to ask questions and, again, raise some of the issues that we've raised in the past, but... Um, I would hope that she would say, you know, I'm really sorry that you were all left feeling this way. It was unintentional. The housing partnership has had a long life and it's clear that it's time to figure out what the next chapter is. And I am committed to doing that with you because um, it matters, you matter, blah, blah. And then I think the next step beyond that, if it happens, is to talk about a process for re tooling us, uh, or at least affirming what our role is going forward and how we will relate as we were talking with Alex about to other people who are actively involved in framing and executing the city's housing strategy. If I'm remembering correctly, Richard, was the strategic plan that we did in 2011, was that a CPA funded thing? We got money through the city council, but I'm trying to remember the source. I can go, have to go back and look, but I think we got some money to pay for a consultant who did the plan. I believe that's true because CDBG would be very difficult to do that with, so. Just putting out that that, that, that that's what we're up against. It's like, we need a, a revised strategic plan for production. Is there may be a source of funding for that. I think that would be a, the housing production plan would be a very small uh, amount compared to. Yeah, it was 20,000, um, I think at most or something like that. Yeah, at most and compared to um, 200. Yeah, housing, housing, building housing. So we're still trying to decide whether we do August. Do we need that meeting? Do people feel we need to to hunker down, or are we are we can we wing it? Just knowing that the invitation is that we want to hear from the mayor that uh, what her what her what her uh, uh, vision is for housing housing in in, in Northampton and in how we can support that. What our role is is that enough of a message to give her enough talking? Yeah. Yeah, um, uh, I'm I'm good with continue to uh, keep August um, the way we have been. Take it off and and uh, meet in September. Um, and yes to um, the questions about meeting with the mayor. And Keith, obviously, I mean, she's a busy, busy person. So I'm assuming that even if she might have said two weeks ago that she was available. We got to commit down, and if you'd let us know if that's still, if, if once it's she's committed, well, just let us confirm that, and, and we'll so we know that we're heading into that. If she for needs September? another day, yeah, for September. Right. Uh, I, I just know how my schedule works. I'm telling you, I'm available today, you know, but I do a doodle, and next next thing I know, I yeah, people are trying that, to also take the same time that I've said I. That was of this morning, so I was okay. Just to get off and that's here, good. That, that's respond. that's pretty time. That's pretty current. So. Um, 
Uh, yes, Hannah. And by the way, Beth, I, I really appreciate um, uh, what you shared about um, what we're sort of looking forward to in terms of the um, conversation with the mayor. So thank you. Uh, Hannah. Oh, yeah. Oh, are we, so is it confirmed that we're doing that meeting in September in person or is that, is that for sure? Yes. Okay. Just wanted to make sure. So is a, is a hybrid meeting a thing that works <laughs> for this group? Because I'm not sure. Um, I'm in the category of got a couple of things bouncing around um, and I'm not sure I'll be back from Maine by that. I could do a Zoom. But it doesn't mean you can't have the meeting without me. Um, I would like the possibility of a hybrid meeting. I have a quite complicated travel schedule coming up and I can't predict yeah. I, I would assume that we have the technology in this day and age to do a hybrid meeting. Um, thank you all for bringing that up. I actually just assumed that it was that it would be hybrid. And so thank you for um, bringing that up. Let's uh, let's get clear on that for sure. I think um, the, the city meeting offices are set up for hybrid. The, the hearing room is set up for hybrid meetings, yes. Um, but um, if everyone just goes remote, then there's almost no point in having it hybrid. So yeah, that was the I whole point of the face-to-face -face interaction, which... Yeah, I think you lose something with some people in the room and some people on Zoom. It's just, I've been in enough of those to feel like the people who are on Zoom get, get forgotten. Their participation is a little bit different, but I don't care either way. I, I, I'm happy to continue to just do what I'm doing right now for that meeting. Might be easier um, to soon get more participation with everybody on Zoom. I'm willing to come in person. So, yeah. Me too. Yeah, I can be there in person as well. I think I can know for sure uh, within a couple of days. So, I'll share that with Keith and, uh, Again, I won't be heard if you do it without me. But we can do it hybrid. Well, Gordon's suggesting that we might lose some of the- I, I just the find that, I mean, yeah. I would go in person because I know that it, I would be easier to participate if person speaking. Um, most people were in a room together and I'm listening into a conversation they're having. <clears throat> right. Yeah, I don't see what the big issue is. I think anybody who is around and can make it in person probably wants to go, but we should allow the option for anybody who, even if they're just listening in, it's important for members of the partnership to, to hear this. Definitely, definitely. And uh, if it's not out of place, I took the liberty of doing just a little bit of legal research while we were there. The Affordable, the Massachusetts Legislative Affordable Housing Trust Fund is exceedingly clear. Uh, section five and six of it says we can employ advisors and agents mm -hmm. uh, and accountants, appraisers, and lawyers as the board deems necessary. And we're, the next section says we can pay reasonable fees to those people. So the ordinance is completely set up to be not burdensome to the city if you know that's if there's money got it all right um okay got it. we did not do minutes i don't know if you want minutes. to sneak that in right I, now i move we approve the minutes I second. All those in favor say aye. 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 <laughs> aye. All right. I mean, it's um, are therefore approved. Thank you, Gordon. I, uh, yeah, that completely escaped my mind. Um, and so what, uh, last but not least, next on our agenda is uh, nominations for chair and vice chair, unless I'm forgetting something else. As far as I know, no one has been nominated or sent their desire 
to be a chair or vice chair. Sorry, that's my dot. <laughs> and uh, so the chair is now va currently vacant and the vice chair at Gardo um, is um, be stepping away soon. So we will be le leaderless. I could serve as chair. Um, that's great. I was thinking about you, Glenn. Or whatever. Yeah, I mean, the, maybe talk a little bit more about what it is. I mean, that's great, Gwen, because I mean, in the past, the way it's always worked is somebody just kind of gets drafted. So, it's, you know, volunteers, it's never really a, a real election. We just photo acclamation. Say, okay, you're the next chair. But, but certainly it might help just to speak a little bit about what Having been a chair, I know that the main the main role is um, you have to facilitate the meeting, um, and I know that uh, we when I was doing with vice chair most recently um, with um, Carmen uh, Keith, Carmen and, and Edgardo, you must have been doing this since my replacement. You would meet a week or two in advance of the meeting to set the agenda and talk about issues. Sometimes it would require you taking sort of the leadership on penning something or signing off on something. Often the Keith and prior to Keith Pegg would often draft something and we would work with them. It's something that had been voted on that we wanted to like do a letter of support, that's kind of thing. And then beyond that, it's something this is not necessarily for just for the chair, but you know, be, being being a spokesperson at certain meetings, being taking that sort of visible role. Those were the main things that I can recall that the chair would do. Okay. Yeah, exactly. But facilitating it. is the main thing. Yeah, so facilitating, creating the agenda, um, representing um, if there needs to be a presence or should be a presence by the partnership. Um, okay. I'm just saying Gwen already kind of represents the housing partnership currently. Uh, she went to the West Mass New Network and Homelessness event at HCC um, and was there um, as our representative. So she's already kind of doing it. Anyway. Yeah, and there are other events I've attended too, such as the Fair Housing Conference. Um, I also attended sometimes some CHAPA events such as small trainings. I think I'm a member of CHAPA. Um, I don't know if my membership still stands because I had student status at that time and I just graduated, so I might have to change that. Um, and I do regularly attend um, housing authority um, meetings and I am regularly um, staying up on the shifts and changes with the housing bond bill. Um, so, you know, that would, I'm kind of working on that, but I I guess I'd like to be a little more focused. So, yeah. And I'm done with school, so I do have a little more time. Well, since Gwen nominated herself uh, nobly, I'd like to second that nomination and thank you for being willing to step into the fray. Um, yeah, I, uh, I second that, or did you just second that? Um, <laughs> I think you just third, I think you just tripled that. Um, I think we can, we can take a formal vote now. We can wait till September, but I don't care. Does it, we need to fill it now or do we need to, does the bylaws require us to sort of nominate and then vote in, in a subsequent? Uh, the bylaws, I'm not too short. concerned about, um, what? Our, our bylaws are very short. Um, yeah. Uh, and I think it's safe to vote now. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, and I, I do want to just make a comment on a suggestion to uh, Gwen. Um, you may also want to think about perhaps in the future um, taking on my role as the housing partnership representative at the housing authority. Um, I've decided that I do want to kind of stick around 
here at um, with the housing partnership, just not on any sort of uh, leadership role and attend as much as I can. And I think I'm 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 at the same I'm at the same point with uh, the housing authority. Um, but I, Gwen, I think you would be given how much you know uh, and your lived experience with the housing authority. I think you would be an excellent uh, person to represent us um, on that uh, on that committee. Mm -hmm. I would like to just take a moment before we vote to uh, thank Edgardo for just all that he's done. Uh, it's been really uh, critical work at a critical time for the partnership. So thank you. Thank you. It's been my pleasure. Um, so, all right, let's take a vote. Um, those, all those in favor of um, having uh, Gwen uh, step into the new chair role, say aye. 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 All right. Looks like we have a new chair. Thank you, Gwen. Thank you, folks. This is exciting. Mm -hmm. Only all elections were this easy. <laughs> <laughs> Wait till November. It'll be great. Right. <laughs> um, I do feel much better about this because when you were about to be voluntold, um, I, I was so <laughs> much had in mind to just throw your name out there. And uh, so thank you for that. Um, yeah. <laughs> thank you. I'm happy to serve. All right, so um, do we have anyone interested in um, helping out with the uh, vice chair role? Oh, oh, all right, I kind of feel like hanging around with Gwen is about as good as it gets, so <laughs> I... Uh, all right. I'm happy to make it a, a uh, ladies team if no one else is particularly interested. New blood, it's good, good to bring in new blood. Yeah. I second. That nomination yes. for vice chair. All right, all those in favor, say aye. 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 <laughs> ah, all right, yeah, it gets easier the, the more we do this. So. Yeah. Um well great. That's this is so this is so good. This is um uh, already a fruitful meeting. I really appreciate you all and thank you, Beth, for uh stepping in. Um we have new leadership and and this is exciting. Um um I'm really looking forward to seeing what, um, how we can revive ourselves here at the housing partnership. I know we were trying to revive the municipal affordable housing trust fund, but um, it was getting a little, um, a little tricky there for a while. So I, I do feel a little bit, um, a little bit more energized by this meeting. I appreciate you all. <laughs> um, and uh, having said that. Um, is there, are there any other business uh, not anticipated? Um, or should we entertain one last motion? Motion to adjourn. Second. All right, all those in favor. Aye. All in favor, see everybody in September. <laughs>